Hello, good morning. My name is Michael Ashari Dafi. Um, here for another awesome, interesting short story for you, which is about uh, the Niger Delta area, particularly the South South encounter with the European during the slave trade era, the era of the palm oil trade, and how Europe plundered the Niger Delta. So it's titled Europe's Plunder of the Niger Delta. Um, one company we'll be looking at, uh, we're making a reference to is the Royal Dutch Shell, which is more than a colonial force in Nigeria. According to Okunta and Douglas, a colonial power exhibits some measure of concern for the territory over which it lords. This is not the case with this mogul, uh, the Shell, which goes for crude oil in the most crude manner possible. Quoting Franz Fennon's book, The Wretched of the Earth. Finally, on the immense scale of humanity, there were racial hatreds, slavery, exploitation, and above all, the bloodless genocide which consisted in the setting aside of 15,000 millions of men. The Niger has the largest drainage of Africa's rivers. The delta into which it's drained is a huge floodplain in southeastern Nigeria, consisting of sedimentary deposits flowing down from the Niger and the Benue rivers and covering about 25,640 square kilometers of the country's total land area. This flawed plain is home to 7 million people grouped into several nations and ethnic groups. The Ijo, the Robo, the Shekri, the Soko, the Afik, the Eche, the Bibio, the Anduni, the Ikwere, the Ogoni, the Ado, the Kwale Ibo. Some of the ethnic groups are further divided into clans with their own distinct languages. Before the arrival of European traders in what is now modern Nigeria, the Niger Delta was inhabited mainly by the Jo Isuko Shakiri people who live in small creek sites, fishing villages ranging from 200 to about 1,000 inhabitants. The head of the village, the Amayanabo or the Amakasoe, who in turn was elected by the heads of the various worlds of patri lineages. With the advent of the slave trade, however, there was a rapid expansion of the population of the Delta. The Itadu idyllic Ijo Isokushakuri fishing villages grew into powerful trading states like Boni, Owome, New Calabar, Okwika, Brass, which is Nembe, the Were, the Waritisi. Some of whose origin can be traced to the early 16th century. The ethnic trading states of Old Calabar at the entrance of the Cross River and the Shakiri Kingdom of Wari in the Western Delta also emerged at this time. The slave trade brought with it great social and economic upheavals in the Niger Delta. Before the arrival of the European slave traders, the Ijo and the other peoples of the Delta traded with the peoples of the interland, mainly the Ibo and Ibibio. The former exported dried fish and salt to their neighbors in exchange for fruit and iron tools. The trade in slaves brought an abrupt stop to this flourishing commerce, peaceful commerce. However, the slave traders brought with them salt, dried fish, and new consumer goods such as cloth and metal utensils. utensils. The consumer goods were often cheap and not necessarily well made. But since the slave traders also brought salt along with them, the Ijo and the other inhabitants of the Delta gave up the trade in fish, salt, and iron tools with the Ibo and Ibibio all together and concentrated on the lucrative slave trade. It is generally assumed that the exploitation of Niger Delta and devastation of their environment began when crude oil was discovered in the area by Royal Dutch Shell in 1956. The truth is that Europe plundering of the Delta and indeed the entire continent dates much farther back to 1444. You hear that? I mean 1444. When the Portuguese adventurer and former tax collector Lancarote de Freitas sailed to West African coast and stole 235 men and women whom he later sold as slaves. The Freitas trip was to trigger the Atlantic slave trade, which before it was displaced by the trade in palm oil in the 1840s, saw several millions able-bodied young women 
men, children taken from the Delta and its interland and shipped to the plantations of North America, South America, and the West Indies. The slave plantations of the West Indies were the basis of much British wealth. Now, I'm going to make something very clear here. I want to categorically say there are a lot of slaves that are presumed are presumed to have come from the Cameroon, who are naturally from the New Calabar area of Cross River and the Delta. The Barclay brothers, David and Alexander, actively engaged in the slave trade in the 1750s and later used the proceeds to set up Barclay's Bank in England. William Gladstone's political career was also funded by family wealth generated by his father's Liverpool trade and West Indies sugar plantations being run with slaves. In 1833, John Gladstone's asset included £296,000, $15 million today, and £40,000, more than £2 million today, or about $21 million and $3 million today. In Demerara and Jamaica, respectively, William Gladstone's first speech in the House of Commons on June 3, 1834, was in opposition to the Slavery Abolition Bill. Of course, there was the clamor for the end of slavery. But he made a speech, William Gladstone made a speech in favor of slave trade against the Slavery Abolition Bill, speaking as a West Indian representative at the time. The staggering economic cost aside, slavery, Slavery was a major deal for William Gladstone. Slavery abruptly brought some catastrophic impact to humanity, especially those of the Niger Delta. Life was disrupted in the Niger Delta and its interland. As a result of these slavery activities, slave trade activities, Inter-ethnic wars were triggered. This led to displacement of whole communities. With the abolition of the slavery in the first decade of the 19th century, there was a switch to the so-called legitimate trade in palm oil. But the pattern of the trade remained unchanged from the slave trade pattern. From the Niger Delta to Europe and back, Europe, Europe was at the height of its industrial revolution at this time, and the demand for palm oil, which was used to lubricate the machines of the factories, and as raw material for soap and margarine was very, very high at the time. The Delta traders played the role of middlemen between Liverpool merchants, who anchored their ships on the coast, and the cultivators of palm oil in the interland. At first, this arrangement was satisfactory to all. The arrangement of the merchant being at the sea coast and the middlemen trading with them, and the middlemen going to the interland to source for those material was a fantastic deal. When trade boomed, by 1850, British trading interests were concentrated mainly in Lagos, which provided access to the wealth of the forests of Yoruba land farther west, and the Delta ports, which were the gateway to the interior of eastern Nigeria. Palm oil was the new chief export, as the European traders no longer, the Euro European traders no longer found the trade in slaves profitable following the advent of the Industrial Revolution. Burning an oil-rich location, presently in the Delta, and Ijo Town, strategically located on the coast, 